Our next presentation is entitled, Don't You Worry About a Thing, The Sinful Nature of Anxiety. Please welcome McKenna Changoli. When was the last time you felt anxious? Maybe it was when your grades were threatened during the switch to online school. Or when COVID-19 was classified as a global pandemic. Or when we were all told to quarantine indefinitely. I personally feel anxious when I think about the unknowns in this season of life. But why do these moments make us anxious? Is it because we are placing every ounce of hope we have into our grades, our jobs, our upcoming plans? Does this mindset align with where our hope should be found? And what does the Bible say about where we find anxiety? Although the normalization of anxiety has led people to believe that it is natural, I argue that non-medical anxiety is sinful because the Bible states that it is a sin, it stems from a lack of faith, and it harms one's relationship with God. In Matthew 6, 25 through 35, Jesus is preaching his Sermon on the Mount to a gathering of his followers. In this passage, Jesus begins with these words. Therefore I tell you, do not be anxious about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, nor about your body, what you will put on. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothing? When looking at the first few words, do not be anxious, it is clear as to what Jesus is saying. There is no room for interpretation. The word not in the original Greek is in the command form. Jesus used this specific word for a purpose. He was commanding that each person there should not be anxious about their needs or worldly desires. At the end of his sermon, he gives an example about the lilies always being clothed even though they may perish in a day. In this example, Jesus refers to those who worry as people of little faith. What is significant about this is that it demonstrates that being anxious is a faith issue. Matthew Henry, renowned Puritan biblical commentator, says that this phrase proves the weaknesses in one's faith when they feel anxious about worldly things. What Henry is saying is that Christ is rebuking the ones who feel anxiety about the needs in life because they should instead have faith in their sovereign God to provide. However, not every type of anxiety is sinful. Anxiety that comes from an anxiety disorder is merely a medical condition and is therefore not sinful. To put it simply, anxiety disorders result from a miswiring of the brain. To put it more technically, the frontal lobes are responsible for the cognitive reactions to situations. More specifically, the amygdala controls reactions in situations of fear. When someone has an anxiety disorder, the amygdala is either overactive or the frontal lobes are working insufficiently. While determining the differences between an anxiety disorder and non-medical anxiety is challenging, one can usually establish if the anxiety is from a disorder, if the anxiety is uncontrollable and lasts for several months. Or, in the case of PTSD, if there is a specific trigger that causes the anxiety. One anxiety disorder that is an exception is GAD. General anxiety disorder is complicated because the cause seems to be unknown. According to the Anxiety and Depression Association of America, this disorder comes on gradually and can stem from anything from family history to upbringing. Those with this disorder worry about anything from money to health. While it can and should be treated medically, it stems from prolonged and excessive daily anxiety, which has been determined as sinful. Now that it is understood that anxiety is sinful, what are the ways to prevent falling into this sin? 
The first thing to understand is that God has and will always take care of his children. So there should be no fear in the future. The second thing to understand when it comes to avoiding anxiety is that earth is not the permanent home for man. Christ followers have a secure place in heaven and get to spend eternity with God, so the worries of the world are insignificant compared with the glory that is to come. Thirdly, when trying to avoid anxiety, a deeper faith in God must be established. The only way for one to free themselves from the worries and anxieties of the world is to hand them all over to God. This takes faith and even obedience. This faith takes humility. C.S. Lewis, well-known writer and theologian, discussed faith and said that the difficulty is to reach the point of recognizing that all we have done and can do is nothing. In order to give up everything to God, one has to understand that they need God. Being freed from anxiety means realizing the need to lean on God for all things. Without leaning on God when times are difficult, anxiety and worry will develop. In the midst of panic and pandemic, we are pushed deeper into anxiety as we wonder when life will return to normal. But this idea of normal was never promised. The nature of living in a sinful world does promise that there will be trials and tribulation. However, we are promised that through every valley, God will walk alongside us. We have hope. We have a God we can lean on who is above every threat. Rather than dwelling on the momentary afflictions, we should instead take heart that in Christ our souls could be filled with hope rather than worry, confidence rather than concern. Thank you.